So let's backtrack a bit to kind of like why I have these questions. Um, THP never really got beyond Tempfest, right? But fortunately, now we have large folios, and we're starting to embrace large folios and different file systems. It's going to be a while before we get to, to the point where we have every file system and embracing large folios. In fact, there's one git grep command that you can run to try to check to see what, what file systems support large folios. I think it's mapping set large folios or something like that. So you can just git grep on the kernel right now for that, and that'll tell you what file systems embrace large folios. There's like, what, like four or something like that? So uh, thank you, Willie, for doing this, because otherwise we wouldn't have that outlet, right? So THP stuck in the Stone Age, in my opinion. Um, and obviously, I've heard you guys talk about you know all these transformations and so forth. But large folios are being now used in a lot of places. Um, and the world hasn't ended, right? So that was a big concern. MTHP is here, too. Uh, the world hasn't ended. Uh, but there's still fear, right, that the world is ending. Um, so that begs the question, well, how do we measure this? How do we ma make sure that that's not happening? Um, and how do we be proactive about that? So the obvious answer is to measure memory fragmentation, right? Um, there's other solutions to this problem, right? And there's proactive you know, development that people are doing to try to address this problem. Maybe we're thinking about memory fragmentation a bit differently. Um, and I think that those are great questions to ask, right? We're, we're addressing these things now, but I think it's, more, it's gonna be more important with time. So, well, for those that do wanna measure fragmentation, memory fragmentation, how do we do that properly? So I wanted to ask here, right, because the only metrics that we have right now are the fragmentation index. So I had asked on the mailing list a while ago, uh, is there a very simple way to do that? Is there a single metric that we can use to measure memory fragmentation? And John Hubbard had provided a recommendation for that. So thank you for that. I looked into that. And basically, we don't have the heuristics, uh, semantics in, in, in memory to do that yet. Uh, I'm not sure if we want it. But then I started looking at other ways that we can measure memory fragmentation. And the answer is really the existing fragmentation index and only look at the positive values for that. Um, and there's another way that we can do this, which is we can simplify that and just provide the same you know, computation, but basically just provide a single metric value. Now, there's a few issues with that. One is that, are we OK with that? Two is um, we have also then to consider uh, whether or not we just do this in user space. Um, and that's a perfectly fine answer, too. But I'd like to revisit with you guys is this the right approach? And also, what are people doing in production right now to measure me memory fragmentation? What are you guys doing to get a sense for how, you know, how close are we to the world ending? You know, what are you guys doing in production? I want to get a, get a feeling for what people are doing. There's obviously people looking into this, right? Because there's obviously these you know, solutions out there for trying to address these problems. So what are you guys doing in production? Um, and now, to the other point, right? We want to get to the point where we start automating this, right? So I looked into address this, to address this problem, basically, I started looking into uh, automation for a mem test, right? And I looked at the workload that Mel Gorman had posted long ago to basically uh, justify memory compaction. And it seems a bit out of date now, right? So what, like at least 10 years ago or something like that, maybe more? So there's a lot of other things that we can probably do to abuse you know, memory fragmentation? What, what should we do? Should we revisit that? Who here uses MM tests? Is that sufficient for that? But even if you use MM tests, we don't yet have like a graph of memory fragmentation, right? So what are people doing then? What are you guys doing? What do you guys recommend? How do we automate this? Come on, someone has to be measuring this. I mean, measuring is the wrong word, but what people are looking into right now is when are certain order allocations failing. Sure. But that's, we're already hitting the problem of fragmentation exactly. at so, that I point. So, I mean, are we just being reactive to it until yeah. like an SAP yes. HANA customer says, fuck you guys, what are you guys doing? Is that it? I think so, yes. Yeah. My God. <laughs> just uh, FIA. I think there's a feature called proactive compaction, and it is triggered by a threshold, and the threshold expresses the fragmentation of the memory. But I cannot remember the details. 
but there is uh, something there. Um, if I remember correctly, there was a metric called UFSI, maybe proposed by Mel Gorman. And I think that could be calculated very simply using the body stat, if I remember correctly. And uh, some of our team is using that uh, metric to measure the fragmentation in some test case. That's not, in, that's not for product use case, but uh, at least I think that could also be considered. I would like to get back to what you're saying about uh, uh, reactiveness versus proactiveness. So yes. uh, how do you, what's your idea to make that this distinction? Because um, uh, yeah, when we start failing certain allocations, then it's already too late. Uh, does, as proactive uh, compaction uh, make a signal or uh, where's that boundary? Uh, because uh, system will be most likely fragmented to a certain degree. It's, it's the question, what's the threshold when you should care that it matters? Is that PSI something that your allocations are getting too much time to, to complete or? Uh, well, I, I'm not facing this issue yet, you know, and we don't, we don't know to what extent this is a real world issue yet, right? Because we, we don't have, let's say, LBS patches merged yet, right? So we don't know what the world is gonna be looking like in the near future, right? We do have large folios already though, so that's already being done. But um, I'm, I'm asking about how do we get a kind of like thermometer for how we're doing, you know, in the kernel for memory fragmentation and how do we keep tabs on that? Uh, I like to get to the point and contribute to the point where we can say, yes, we have this now, uh, measured, we're automatically doing this, this is what we're doing, but I don't know what the answer to that question is, how do we do this, you know? I, I think the is issue that you're facing is that for now most of the allocations were able to fall back to order zero. I mean not all of them, but for user space if you didn't get a THP, fall back to order zero. I think you're facing the problem once you have like this min order requirement where like your block device has, I don't know, a 16 kilobyte block and you really need like yes. an order three or order two page. Yeah, I mean th that will be the, fu the world of the future, yes. But um, how do we be proactive about getting gauge for what we're doing, h how m memory fragmentation is today? Right, and I think that the problem is, it's more problematic because you actually want to measure fragmentation on a specific order. I mean, you, maybe you don't care if like order nine is available, but for most usage cases, maybe you are interested in order two being available or so able so to be yeah. made available. Um, it's more the question what benchmark will reveal that or another issue. Uh, oops, of course. Uh, like, uh, what workload, workloads should be used to identify which problems? Like, there are, there are uh, indications like proc zones and uh, proc uh, body well, so, info. So the, the fragmentation index is per order. So we, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we, we can already do that and, and leverage that, but is that really it? Is that, is that the only thing that we, we have and is it the only thing that we want? The other thing too is that the, the compaction in this index is also debugfs. Do we want to change it out? Um, yeah. As you're saying, what are you actually looking for? Are, are you looking for a number that you can want, compare want, against a different number? And I want to try to answer the question. If you start introducing, let's say, the world of using larger block sizes, how have we made memory fragmentation much worse? How do we answer that question? I want to get to the point where you can do A and B contrasting. And then if we're trying to then be proactive about memory fragmentation, how do we measure success for that too? Right? Because if we do solve memory fragmentation through some heuristics or some other way, how do we measure that? How do we say, yay? Yeah, measure is one thing, but unit of that measurement is another thing. So uh, is, is, is it sufficient to know that uh, things that were green are yellow now and are becoming red? 
or do you need 7.8 because 7.6 was much better? I'm here for feedback. I'm yeah. here for, for, for getting guidance. I don't know the answer to this question, otherwise I wouldn't be here, right? So I, I don't know. I'm yeah. trying to see how do we answer this question through metrics. Yeah, yeah because the way I would be approaching that uh, is to uh, rely on PSI because that's a measure of the work that needs to be done in order to, for allocation to, uh, to succeed. So uh, it, it just gives you an idea that uh, so, allocating uh, some memory is really expensive before it starts failing. Okay. But it, it, it will give you very ballpark kind okay. of measure because you cannot really map a specific number to, I'm not sure how much they are comparable. Okay. Uh, thanks, Luis. This is a great topic. So first thing I want to emphasize is we cannot improve what we cannot measure. Right. Everyone agrees, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's not, yeah, that's not by design. That's, that's by evolution. And we are engineers and scientists. We, we don't do things by evolution, you know, by accident. <laughs> so uh, let, let, let me rephrase your question. What is fragmentation? Entropy, <coughs> right? I'm not sure you know, um, how much you remember from high school uh, physics or you know, probably beyond high school. Um, fragmentation, in essence, is entropy. So how do we measure entropy? Entropy is temperature, right? So what's carbon room temperature? That's one value. We said, let's say, 73. But that's wrong. Why? Because we, I'm, I'm measuring this point. This room is a, a volume, right? I'm measuring this point. This point, if I have thermometer, is 73 degrees, right? So. Actually, to measure fermentation, you cannot just use a single number. Because memory is two dimension, right? You have to at least have a matrix. Of course, you can do approximation. You say, oh, this area is about this, this small uh, area is about this value, and that small area is about that value, right? So you, you, you need a lot of numbers to uh, accurately measure fermentation, but, if you don't really care, you said I want a one value, which I don't really care, I do because if I if I buy 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 a dress shirt, at least I look at the three values, right? <laughs> but using one value to measure entropy, I think that's very um, that's 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 just not me. So, but, well, I so think what, what I'm trying to go go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So so what I think makes sense is something like Michal suggested that like practical measure of this could be like how much effort uh, did we put into like compacting stuff oh, so like, how long it takes yeah. well well it's not really how long it takes you know but uh, i would expect some internal counter you know implementing some internal counter into how much effort did, did we put into comp compacting over some some test run allocating pages of various orders yeah i, I can tell you that's theoretically wrong because again, you cannot use one single number, which is dimensionless, to measure a multi-dimensional uh, metric. Oh, go ahead. Well, I agree that it, it's it's very. I, I agree it's like not not telling the whole story, eh? right. but uh, I guess it's practically usable measure. Eh? I, I when when Lewis asked about this, he said, uh, "Can can we come up with a number for fragmentation?" And 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 so I. I thought about it for a while, and then I started graphing things out, and I realized that, like you say, you, yes and no. So, but the yes part first is, yeah, you, you can, because what you're really looking for, I mean, ultimately, you're looking for fragmentation is a way to tell you whether or not you can get what you want, and what you want is the ability to get a certain size chunk out of that area. And so if you just look at uh, the simple way to count or to, to measure fragmentation is to simply say, how many, how many separate pieces are inside of this block? So if you've got zero percent fragmentation, there's the thing. The thing is a single block, and then you can just start counting up from there. And so that's where the algorithm comes from. So I'm, I'm going to claim yes, you you can come up with a single number 
to measure that, and I, and I sent it to Lewis. <laughs> so take a look at it before you say you can't. Uh, and, and just to get to clarify, I did try to implement it, but there was a heuristic there that, that's not present. We don't keep a counter, I forget, for one of the numbers that you mentioned. I forget what it was, but we don't have that, and I'm not sure. I was not going to be the person it to introduce yeah, no, but there, there's enough information there that we can do most of it, but there's one attribute that you mentioned that we don't keep track of. I forget what it was. So then I, that's why I started looking at the compaction index instead. Uh, I'm just going to... How do you infer from that number? Like, uh, how, how likely is it that you're going to be able to succeed with certain allocation or how, yeah. how do you... I'll just give you a quick answer and then turn it over. Uh, first of all, you assume that within this, this area, there's a minimum size of things. So in our case, it's probably like a 4K page, for example. So now it gets easy, right? So now you can say, well, this area can only hold 10 pages. So you know, obviously, you can start <laughs> figuring out your fragmentation level. If, if you have um, three objects in there, or, or let's say you've allocated one object in that area, um, now you can start saying, well, it's not 0% fragmentation. If you allocate another one, and again, you don't really care where it is, you're, you're, you're moving toward your 100% fragmentation. And if you've allocated, um, I, forget how I, I forget how I got, how I ramped up all the way to 100%, but basically if you allocate every other one, you're at 100% fragmentation. Right, so, but so I think that you're neglecting very important detail. And that, means, and that means that uh, the memory uh, or fragmentation whatever measure would depend on the allocation request because uh, it, you might have requests for a movable allocation that has that really huge movable zone which you can easily compact and that fragmentation uh, index would mean completely something else for a GFP kernel um, a large order allocation that cannot access that memory and needs to play somewhere completely else. Yeah. So you're not only of, that, but you're ahead of me. You're yeah. you're going to the next level, and mm -hmm. all of this is is an attempt to to answer the question of, mm -hmm. is there a number I can give you as a starting point to estimate fragmentation? And and I agree with everything you said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> going beyond that and saying, well, how how much does this help me? Okay, well now I give up. Um, I I've only told you what I can tell you with a single number, which is a limited amount of information. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, that uh, uh, having a precise number is probably not what we want, but, uh, but what, getting back to PSI. PSI just gives you a notion of how much non-productive time do you have to invest in to get your allocation su uh, successful. And that's an important measure of how well you are doing because uh, uh, if, if you are better at def, uh, defragmating or compacting or uh, shuffling things in, in behind, then uh, the index will be lower than if you really have to do that synchronously from your allocation uh, from allocation call path. Should, does does a compaction use that, or should it be using that? If not, uh, essentially, whenever you are allocating, that time spent in the allocator, including the compaction is measured by that, uh, by that metric. So you are not getting uh, information about uh, your specific allocation request because uh, any background work just contributes to that silently, but uh, if that background work is successful enough, then you are successful as well. See what I mean? Yeah. But it also includes reclaim. It also includes reclaim. It's not per order. It's per allocation side. I'm not sure whether it can be enhanced to um, to give you a better breakout. That okay. So PSI for uh, order zero, zero is this. For order five is uh, that big. Maybe that is an extension that could be added with some reasonable numbers. But uh, uh, having or looking for a single number that would describe your. Uh, overall fragmentation I think is slightly misleading because it not only depends on your requirements where that memory should be sitting but also 
what you can do from that allocation request. For example, if you are in file system and you are under file system logs and you cannot do your GFP no, uh, no FS, then your fragmentation the index might be completely different because you cannot perform cer certain actions from the uh, compaction just to get what you are asking for. But but as a start, just to get a general idea of the, the compaction level in the system, what like I, I think I, I like the idea of using the, the fragmentation index um, because I mean why not uh, compaction is using it um, it seems useful for a single value uh, maybe PSI is better as you mentioned depending on on the the the, the efficiency of a, of a future compaction but I don't see any fundamental reason why just using the fragmentation index is bad or incorrect. Yes. So just some practical comments to your original questions. Should a kernel provide a single value? I think no. It should be the user space uh, calculating it from the existing interfaces. We don't want to add a new one. And uh, fragmentation index, as you say, is in the bug FS, and that uh, might be a limitation. But what I also think, or I check the code before, but my, I might be mistaken, but it's calculated from some values uh, that are also available in proc body type info or proc, proc page type info or body info. So you can calculate it yourself in user space or you can even come up with some way to Wash the per per order indices to one value if you want. So it should be possible to do in user space, and we definitely don't want to add a kernel counter for it because then it will be set to stone. And if we find the metric is not great and we might improve it, it we couldn't do that in the kernel. But yeah, parsing one proc file and doing the calculation should be trivial, right? OK, so let me see if I can summarize what I've heard so far. Sounds like there's different opinions on, on this. Um, there's do, there doesn't seem to be strong agreement on a path. No, um, I strongly disagree, actually. I, uh, using Android as an example, right? Yes. Because you don't really understand how Android works. To say I have three apps. Two is, uh, uh, one is the foreground app. The other two are in the background. And then I have this single number. Then what I should do? Now I cannot allocate um, 64K MTHP. What, I should, what action should I take? I could, uh, let, let me just say um, potential options here. I could reclaim. I could compact. I could uh, do low map kill. Which action I should take? With a single number, and which which memory area? Because let's say this phone has four gig memory, which pitch block or which whatever um, memory area you use to uh, measure to you to 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 uh, apply this single number? Where should I start? Compaction, reclaim, or lumen kill, which is own kill. Because all three can potentially. Well, I, I was not looking for an answer to the problem of let's address memory fragmentation. That's separate. I was looking to just measure it. That's all. That's very different, right? So, um, but you, I, you're, you're focused on addressing it, though, right? No, because we. So what, this is what I said. You know, uh, we cannot improve what we measure because we want measure things because we want to improve it. That's actually what I implied, right? Because I know, oh, this is bad. That's why I want to take some actions. But I cannot take any actions. I don't know this is bad. Okay, so, so you would like to see, to see this metric improved, is that right? So I would like to, leverage, to use, because I heard like we used PSI as a, an example, right? Based on PSI, I can take actions. But based on this single number, I don't know how to take actions. That's my question. 
Because based on PSI, I could say, oh, okay, there's too much pressure. I'll just do um, Luma MQ. I'll just remove one um, background app. If it's still not enough, I'll remove another one. And then I don't have any uh, other option left. Probably I could still reclaim some memory from the foreground app, right? But with this single number, let's say we, we also call it PSI fragmentation, right? What action should I take? Okay, so uh, PSI, measure PSI, great. Um, again, I'm not looking for the solution of, of doing something to counteract that. So, um, I, I mean, I, I would just add that I think, you mentioned like the world is gonna end, and that the world is gonna, really gonna end in your system if you have a lot of fragmentation with unmovable data. That means like you cannot you cannot easily compact, compaction wouldn't do anything. You cannot easily reclaim, reclamation wouldn't do anything. There's like what, what uh, Michael told about the zone movable, which is yet another story where your like allocation context comes into play. But maybe, I'm, I'm not sure, taking a look at how many page blocks do we have that are of mixed type, for example, they contain both movable and unmovable allocations and the ones that only contain unmovable allocations that maybe could give an indication where the system is trending yes. to. Yes, I agree. That, that would be like if you monitor that maybe over time and you run a workload, maybe you could see that it's shifting towards one direction where you cannot easily recover and the world could end. <laughs> because basically you extend that single number into a dimensional, right? By looking at different page blocks, that at least one dimensional, right? Because single number is dimensionless. Is so it, like it, I said, this room temperature is 73. It's really, really approximation. Doesn't mean anything to you because we are like a. Okay, so you want to vectorize, yeah, you know, yeah. introspection of yes. memory fragmentation. Yes. Yes, but of course we we always say 73, right? We we don't care, but uh, you know. For this particular topic, we, we do care. <laughs> so we do need to think about it, uh, whether it's dimensionless, one dimensional, or two dimensional. So, so the, the metric by, uh, so the metric for that object? Uh, so, so if I understand you correctly, like PSI plus whatever the metric David uh, <laughs> come up with, uh, like <laughs> these two <laughs> combine, or maybe something more. Uh, but coming back, it seems, sounds like we need a histogram, right? I mean, we, we want we want deltas, not just one. We we want to see where things are going, right? Not not a dimensionless, not a single map, not a dimensionless. Right, 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 right. Not a dimensionless unit. Right. That's my um, yeah. At least this that this would be my so minimum how requirement. How many dimensions should we be looking at? If you want, really. Um, depends on the uh, maximum size and minimum size, minimum highest order and lowest order you want to allocate. So page, um, page block, per page block value would be nice, right? Usually would, would be more than enough, right? But if you want to allocate beyond um, uh, order of the page blocks, then you would have to use additional numbers. Because basically you have to have at least two uh, numbers per area, one is like the highest, one for the highest order, and the other for the lowest order. You plan to allocate lowest order that is not R0, because if the R0, then there's no problem. Can we close it here? Yeah, yeah please, get yeah. beer. <laughs> <laughs>